Back to Florida. Lauren Coleman is a cryptozoologist and has studied reports of the sea monster for decades. He has collected dozens of reports of sightings, detailed creatures depicted on ancient sea charts. The ones off of Florida, more often than not, tended to have a large body, almost like a walrus body or a whale body, and they'd have a very distinctive head that often was described like a horse's head or like a giant seal head or even something else that looked very mammalian with whiskers and hair, eyebrows and different things like that. Though many of the sightings date to the 1800s, there has been a recent surge. Most of the knowledge of sea serpents and sea monsters, however, from Florida really comes from World War II and that era during the 40s when people were looking more than they ever had before for unusual things off of the coast. They were looking for submarines and they oftentimes would see these creatures that didn't quite fit. The most dramatic encounter was first reported in the 1962 issue of Fate magazine. A witness claimed that in the waters near Pensacola, Florida, a long-necked monster had attacked and murdered four of his friends. The deaths were documented, but the monster was never found. Unfortunately, with sea monsters, there's not much in the way of tangible evidence. Here again, we have to rely on folklore, on traditions, and then testimony of eyewitnesses. Coleman believes there may be something as yet undiscovered in these Florida waters. And a lot of us have said in terms of cryptozoology that the newest animals will be those ones found in the ocean. All we have to do is look at the coelacanth, for instance. We also have the Megamouth shark, which in 1976 was uh, discovered off of Hawaii. And so some of these uh, large creatures have been right there under our nose. The tape of the sea creature has been analyzed by leading marine experts, including Dr. Martina DeWitt at the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission, which tracks and manages 575 of the area's native species. DeWitt believes the video shows a mammal, one she thinks she recognizes. Based on what I saw, the position of the nares, the position of the eye, and the shape of the head, all the heads that I saw belong to manatees. The Florida manatee is an endangered species. They grow to be about 10 feet long and weigh some 1,000 pounds. Their skin is a dark, mottled, gray-brown in color. The face is wrinkled similar to its closest relative, the elephant. They actually are really tactile and mobile with their face. They can kind of use it like an elephant's trunk. So it's not always as uh, round as you would see in the typical manatee pictures. While DeWitt is convinced, some of her colleagues aren't so sure. That one does not look like a uh, typical manatee head, for sure. They definitely have a narrower snout going to a point. That is, that's very wild. It's definitely a skinnier snout. Yeah, it doesn't have the broad flaps in it. The eyes are, are very, very close to the front. They look to be pretty, pretty good sized also. The more I'm looking at it now, it's definitely not a manatee. Dr. Ed Patuk of Florida Atlantic University compares the features to other sea creatures that might have a similar body type. Well, there you go. No, no, that's, that's, no, no, that's the best picture I've seen yet. That's interesting. But that definitely looks like a pinniped of some kind. You know, a uh, walrus seal, something like that. Yeah, it's it strange. Seems very nice and... Well, I have no idea what could have that kind of a tail. So Dr. Peter Sorensen is a marine biologist at the University of Minnesota and is confounded by what he sees. I'd like to know what that was. Some kind of logical explanation. It's an odd angle. The eye position is a bit strange. Um, the muzzle shape is, is peculiar. The glimpses he sees are tantalizing, but frustrating. I think, uh, again, the, the, the question is here, do we really know what we're looking at, really? 
it, this shot lends itself to the best angle, to see the narrow face, the muscle, the head shape. This is the one that intrigues me the most. It says, man, that is so unmanity like it's not even funny. Some animation might help to see if it is in fact the head, or it could be the head that we're looking at. Um, it's uh, difficult to ascribe with any certainty what that really is. His snout is always... The Monster Quest down. science team enlists forensic animators to attempt to create a graphic representation of the creature. In our footage here... They are studying the Sauerwein footage, frame by frame, and sketching each feature as it comes into view. Each detail will then be positioned on a single creature and animated based on the movements caught on video. The resulting three-dimensional composite should give a more complete picture of the creature and assist marine biologists in determining just what it is. How many times do you have get a chance to put something together to solve the mystery? Sloping up. When I think of a dog snout, that's kind of what the shape that comes to mind where the eye is actually defined yeah. by, a, by a brow ridge. Um. We are part of solving problem. It's not like, okay, this monster looks like this. It's more like we get piece by piece and get the information and put it together. That's something we never done before. That's why this is such a different project than other. How long do you think it's gonna to take to start animating? Well, we're gonna need to do a lot more work to the head, but I think within a week, we can have the model finished. The expedition is now at the exact location where Sauerwein first saw the creatures in 1999. The closer we get to the mangroves, the better. That's where most of the action was. Monster Quest is in Florida where a strange creature with a large head and a trident-shaped tail has been seen for centuries haunting seafarers and fishermen. And it was very spooky to see something like that that was so big and, and so agile. Sam McRoberts is one of the most recent eyewitnesses to see the creature. Gene and I used to go fishing a lot up at the old fishing pier back in the late 60s and uh, 70s and I said Gene you know it sounds crazy I said it's hard to believe you know I'd like to take a look and see what it is so just let me know next time you see him. Sauerwein called with the news that Roberts had been waiting for. See that head pop up? Yep, yep, yep. He said this the sea monsters are over here and I go you gotta be kidding so I thought well okay so I drove over to the site where he was and I swear it didn't take but about five or ten minutes and there they were. You could see the back of it, and then it stuck its head up and zoomed across the water. I would say maybe, you know, 12 feet long. There was a, a whaler that came into the bay, and as soon as it, and it was about maybe four or 500 yards off, it disappeared. It was so weird because it was in shallow water, and all of a sudden it was gone. And then after that whaler went out, we could see it way out, farther out in the bay, like maybe three, 400 yards out. But I mean, I couldn't get a clear shot of it then, but I got the pictures and I said, this is amazing. Um, I said, I don't know if anybody's ever going to believe it or not, but we got the pictures, so take it from there. McRoberts rejects the idea that they are a known species. I had never seen anything quite like this other than I've seen manatees and I know what they look like. And this was similar in color to a manatee, but it was much different from the head structure, the eyes, had big eyes, big nostril holes on the top. It had fins that were, pectoral fins that were thick and stuck out, and it zoomed across the water very quick, not like a manatee. Something like that. Dr. Ed Patuk's analysis of the video of the creature is focusing on one frame in particular and he makes a possible discovery. That's the perfect proportions to the thing, head tail. It's a seal of some kind. Seals were once native to Florida, but there are no longer any known warm water seal populations. Dr. Batuk has a theory to explain that. He thinks these may not be warm water seals. And we get all kinds of weird uh, animals coming here all the time. The most recent example was an arctic bearded seal that was rescued from the Tarpon River in a residential neighborhood of Fort Lauderdale, Florida. 
Other Arctic seals, like the hooded seal, are now being found as far south as the Canary Islands. If they are following the Gulf Stream, as some experts believe, their first opportunity at landfall would put them in this area. It's the closest point to the Gulf Stream to land. It would be logical if they were hooded seals heading south, that they would just follow the Gulf Stream right in. As the ice sheets are retreating northward, you're finding things from the south that are sort of moving farther north, things from the north that are moving farther south. And apparently, uh, much to my surprise, uh, these hooded seals seem to be very, very adaptable, which you never expect for a creature that lives on ice flows and, and feeds at a thousand feet below sea level. Hooded seals are a dark gray-black color and grow to be about nine feet long and 900 pounds. The head was exactly that of a female hooded seal. The males have this great big red bladder that sticks up. It's what they're called hooded seals. They use it as a display, you know, sexually or, you know, for rivals, this type of thing. The sour wine creature does not appear to have large whiskers like a seal does. Although both animals have nostrils at the end of the long snout. Both have front flippers. But while the seal has a split tail, it is nothing like the Sarawain creature's unusual trident tail. That's uh, elongated, very odd. And see, the seals, if it's a seal, they wouldn't have that kind of a tail. They would have the uh, fused flippers, essentially, in the back, with joints. It could be, uh, at least some of the animals shown on the tape, could be something that we wouldn't expect to see here. Florida cryptozoologist Scott Marlowe has reviewed the tapes himself and has come up with yet another theory. He thinks it is a creature thought to be extinct. Uh, that would be a major find. He believes that they are Caribbean monk seals, which were all but eliminated by the end of the 19th century. That's why they're so easy to kill. They used them for oil, actually, for oil lamps, and also seal skin. They used it for uh, seal skin jackets, waterproofing. The monk seals use this coastline a lot. But, of course, as soon as people came in, they disappeared. The last monk seal sighting was near Jamaica in 1952, although they weren't officially declared extinct until June of 2008. Proving their existence would rewrite history. If it turned out to be a monk seal, it would be enormous news. If these really are seals, an animal that should not be here, then they should be readily visible. Seals are creatures that require both salt and fresh water. They would need to travel the same narrow channel that connects the lake to the sea that is used daily by dozens, sometimes hundreds of boaters. Monk seals grew to nearly eight feet long and 400 pounds, smaller than the estimated size of the creature recorded on the tape. But remember, we haven't seen these things for over 50 years, so we don't know what may have happened in that 50-year span, and that would be probably about three or four generations. So a lot of things can happen in a very short period of time, as, a, as a biologists are finding out. Uh, certain types of adaptation, when nature has a void, can be filled very rapidly. My theory is that they come and go through these under, underground passages and zip in and zip out and no one sees them. Much of Florida is connected by an extensive network of freshwater springs and underground rivers called a karst system. Over time, flowing water dissolves limestone, creating sinkholes, caves, and underground drainage systems that can link diverse bodies of water. The Monster Quest dive team will explore the lake bottom to see if it conceals such a passageway. One that would allow the creatures to infiltrate from the sea without being seen. Top side, I'm coming up on something and I hope it's a diver. A large, unknown animal may very well stalk these murky waters. Got a hard target at 120 feet and it's between 10 and 13 feet in length. We have a sonar hit at our 10 o'clock, but 120 feet. Target 23 yards now, closing. This thing's moving quick. Monster Quest is combing the murky waters of Florida for an unknown monster. 
They are searching for the creature and trying to find an underwater passageway to explain how the creature might be appearing